Hello and welcome. In this video segment, I will present the display modes within CATIA V5. So let's get busy. CATIA offers many options for controlling how model geometry displays on the screen. CATIA gives you seven basic rendering styles for displaying solid models or surfaces. You can change the current render style by selecting View Render Style. You can also change it using the flyout on the view toolbar. Let's go through rendering styles one by one. Shading displays the model with fully shaded faces. Shading with edges displays the model with fully shaded faces and visible edges. Shading with edges without smooth edges displays the model with fully shaded faces but without any smooth edges. Shading with edges and hidden edges. Displays the model with fully shaded faces and all edges including hidden edges. Shading with material. Displays a high quality rendering of the model, applying a material type you specify. Wireframe. Displays the model as a 3D curves with every edge in the part displayed. Customize view. Displays the model using the settings you defined under view, render style, customize view. CATIA offers two display modes for your model. Parallel displays the model with features shown according to their size. Parallel lines are shown as parallel. Perspective displays the model with closer features appearing larger than features farther away. Parallel lines appear to converge in the distance. Use the custom view modes dialog to define your own render style. You can combine these settings as needed, but some settings cannot be combined and some settings automatically activate others. Lines and points, edges and points controls the display of all wireframe edges and points. All edges displays all edges of the part. Half visible smooth edges displays radius or surface tangent edges with a lighter edge color than sharp edges. For example, if the sharp edges are black, the half visible smooth edges will be medium gray. No smooth edges display sharp edges only. Outlines displays wireframe edges along the outside of the body. Isoparametrics displays the U and V curves for a surface. This option is only available if activated in Tools, Options, General, Display, Performance tab. No wire, no axes, no points. It hides all the wires and points and it can also hide the axis system if these options are checked in. Mesh shading controls the display of shaded faces. Gorad renders shaded faces. Material renders the shaded model using the material properties assigned to it. This option needs to be active when analyzing surfaces or draft angles. Triangles displays the face rendering boundaries. These do not represent actual face boundaries, but rather the polygons used for rendering. Transparent displays shaded faces in a transparent color. Hidden edges and points displays edges hidden by other faces in the hidden line font. Dynamic hidden line removal displays the model in wireframe with hidden edges removed. Lighting. Select view lighting to display the light sources dialog. The icons above the preview window control the type of lighting used to display the shaded model. With single light or two lights active, 
You can drag the handles in the preview window to move the light source. Katia updates the graphics window as you make changes. You can also double click these lighting handles or the neon light handle to set the light's color using the color dialog. No light removes all point light sources from the model. This option makes the model appear flat and monotone. Single light uses a single point light. This is the default setting. Two lights adds an additional point light. Neon light lights the model with a series of linear lights. This setting can be useful for visualizing the curvature of a model. Ambient controls the overall light level. Diffuse controls the difference in brightness between the ambient light and the point lights. Specular sets the distance of the point lights to the model. Increasing this value gives more realistic, less flat shading. Depth effects. This task explains how to achieve 3D depth effects, namely clipping geometry between clipping planes and creating fog effects. Select View, Depth Effect to display the Depth Effect dialog box. The orange sphere completely encompasses the objects in your document. The white cross represents the center of the objects in the geometry area. The color of the area behind the orange sphere is the background color of your document. The vertical lines represent the front or near and back or far clipping planes. By default, depth effects are deactivated. If you zoom in and out, you will see that for the moment the geometry is not clipped. You can keep the depth effect dialog box open and continue working with other commands. You will be able to understand the results obtained by setting depth effects by zooming in and out. Set the near limit and far limit by selecting the fixed checkbox for each option, entering values and pressing enter in each case. Note that location of the vertical lines representing the clipping planes has changed. You can also drag the vertical lines representing the near and far clipping planes to produce the same effect. You now only see what is located between the near and far clipping planes. Select the foggy checkbox. The foggy option introduces a foggy effect. Zoom out again. As you zoom out, the fog effect is increased. The fog gets thicker as you continue to zoom out beyond the back clipping plane. Ground. Selecting view ground displays a grid representation, the ground plane. This plane does not actually depict the origin. It always displays parallel to the XY plane. Full screen. Selecting view full screen expands the graphics window to fill the entire area of your screen. The only other thing that displays is the windows taskbar. You can go back to the normal view by right clicking and selecting full screen from the pop-up menu. That concludes this video. Thanks for watching and see you soon.